Hi, Internet. My name is Crystal, and I'm a senior in the Geography and Environmental Resources Program at the University of Alaska Southeast, and I worked on the project Scaling the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. The purpose of this project was to create a spatial representation of the impact of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline on personal, local, national, and global scales. To do this, we focused on six different categories, mobility, history, politics, globalization, and representation. I focused on the mobility and representation portions of this project, and I'm gonna walk you through what I worked on with the mobility section of the project. So first thing to know about the pipeline, it was constructed, it's over 100 miles. It's huge. It goes across the state of Alaska from the North Slope, Prudhoe Bay, down to the bottom here at Valdez. 800 miles of pipeline, which was laid in just about two years when they constructed it. Uh, so in order to do this massive amount of labor in such a short period of time, they created construction camps on different levels of the pipeline so they could have people live there, stay there, eat, sleep, never leave the camp, just work, 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 uh, and build this pipeline in two years. Um, each one of these camps had a different name, and you can look at all the camps on our full history pin map. I'm just going to go through a few of them right now for you. Um, one of the camps that I looked at was called Happy Valley Camp. Uh, each camp along the pipeline had a different name, and each of these names was um, very particular. They weren't just arbitrary names. Um, they were given the name for a very particular reason. Um, and for this one, they was named Happy Valley because the um, director of the camp said the valley looked happy to him, so he would name it Happy Valley. Um, the reason this is included in mobility is because the terminology of camp is something we think of today as being recreational, but um, it hasn't always been that way. And the term camp today we think of something fun, something we do just to get outside and enjoy nature. Um, but in this time, camp was referred to as a place that these people were living and working and staying for extended periods of time. And remember, this is Alaska, so it gets really cold <laughs> in the winter. So to think about living in a camp for two years, building this huge pipeline, um, which would provide oil, which would provide mobility to the rest of the world, while you're in this camp, which is normally mobile, but really it wasn't, it's just a really interesting kind of thing to be a part of in the 70s. Um, a lot of these camps were so um, big and put together, they were called temporary cities, which a city is not a camp at all. Um, down here we have a video of actually from one of the camps, it was called Coldfoot Camp, it was one of the northernmost camps, and it was referred to as a temporary city because um, you were so, people were so connected within the camp and there were so many workers. Um, they had, they played games, they had even music groups in the camps. Um, it really was like living in a, in a city, but it just wasn't. And it was always built to be temporary. And while the camps were temporary, the pipeline was meant to be permanent. Um, in 1989, you have the massive Exxon Valdez oil spill which spilled oil into Prince William Sound off the coast of Valdez. Um, this photograph right here actually is an island of Kodiak, which is way out here um, at the start of the Aleutian Islands. And you can see these uh, individuals here are cleaning up oil with just paper towels. She has this roll of paper towels next to her. And they're cleaning up oil off their beach um, just by using that. And this oil spill happened way back up here in Prince William Sound. And it really begs the question, uh, who's, who's going to cover this when these kind of things happen? Because it was just an accident. Nobody meant for it to happen. But, you know, the oil company's not going to want to pay for it. The Alaskan government's not going to want to pay for it. Kodiak can't pay for it because they don't have the money or the resources to handle it. And Valdez, which was the place I was hard to say that's where the oil still happened, took them years to clean up and they're still cleaning up. And even today we're still studying the global impacts of this oil spill. So it's really the mobility of oil while it lets us drive around and you know powers us on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, when it spills or when it gets out of hand, the fluid itself is also mobile and it causes tricky issues that 
are really hard to kind of deal with. Um, and then if you look at today, and this is being filmed during the COVID-19 crisis, um, and this is a graph I made of the price of oil per barrel in the North Slope in 2020. And you can see it started out pretty strong in the beginning of the year. And then as we moved into March with more shutdowns, more quarantines, um, it just plummeted. But the interesting thing I think about this is when you look at it next to the production, they were still producing the same amount of oil they were aside from one dip on March 19th. Um, which is when they think they discovered somebody who actually had COVID-19 on the North Slope. But then it went right back up to uh, full production. So they're still producing all of this oil and it's just not, it's not really going anywhere because none of us are going anywhere now. Um, so COVID-19 has really impacted uh, everyone's personal mobility, um, whether you're in a place where it's a shelter at home, a stay at home, shelter in place, whatever they're calling it where you are, everyone's being recommended to stay at home and try to limit your contact with people. And while it's a good thing to do to stop the virus, you know, we don't want more deaths or anything like that, it plays a huge part in the economy and in mobility and uh, really limits, you know, people's livelihoods and if you can stay put, uh, that's great, but if you can't, then you can't. So mobility is something that oil gives to us, and it's also something that it can take away from us, um, as we've seen now with climate change and everything like that. So that's my tour on what I worked on with the mobility and the pipeline. Uh, if you want to check out our whole project, there's a link down below that you can click and take yourself on your own tour of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. And if you have any questions, you can drop it in the comments below and we'll answer it.